My father comes from a village called Tevur, which is near Tiruvarur, Tanjore district, Tamil Nadu. Uh, it happens to be quite close to Nagapatnam, and which from which the ship uh, left for Penang and Singapore. So he came in 1951. But before that, his brothers came somewhere around 1935, 1940s. So he was asked to come here to work. So once he landed in Singapore, he found a job in the British Army. And he probably thought at the time he will stay here for just a sh short while, a few years, and go back to India. But somewhere around 1959 or 58, the brothers sort of brought him back to get married. So he got married in 58, and my mother came along with him in 1959, and we settled in Singapore. Even then, I suppose he was thinking that he would be here for a few more years and go back, but it didn't happen. So I'm here. I was born in 1962, and I've got four other siblings. So we have, we have become Singapore citizens and stayed here. There was a very interesting detour in my life. Somewhere around 1968, so this thought about going back uh, was still there. So he thought that let's send the children back and then he will follow suit. That's also because the British Army was pulling out of Singapore. The British Army, the Australian and the New Zealand Army had decided to pull out. So he felt that that's it. That's the end of the journey here in Singapore. So we were all sent back to Tevur, which is uh, what I mentioned near Nagapatnam. And for me, I was a six-year-old boy. And uh, it was a very interesting uh, moment, having grown up in a, a town in Singapore, suddenly found my, myself in Tevur, a village, one fine evening. Uh, very interesting is, even the ship couldn't dock near Nagapatnam. We had to be almost thrown from the ship into a small boat. And that brought us to Nagapatnam. And then we took the Bulakat to Tevur. So all of that as a child was quite fun. Probably I didn't know that I'm going back for a long time. I probably thought I'm going back for a short while. So I stayed in Nagapatnam for two years. And because, uh, you know, my mother was alone, my father didn't follow suit because the pullout was quite long, about four years. So he left us there and thought that he will join us. A couple of years later, in 1970, due to schooling and, and so on, uh, we went over to Coimbatore to stay with my uh, maternal uh, periyama, periyapa, which is aunties, auntie and uncle. And I spent another two years in Coimbatore. And my father decided, okay, he's not going to go back. So he brought us all back in 1972. So uh, it's quite scary for us. Uh, I was by then 10 years old, having studied in a Tamil school for about four years, five years. Coming here and there, were on, there was only one Tamil school, which was Umara Pulavar Tamil Palli. And I thought my father would just uh, enroll me there. But contrary to my uh, belief, he said, you're going to go to the English school. And that was a bit scary because uh, in India, in a Tamil school, English only gets introduced in primary five. So that was the time I was pulled out from there. So I had known probably the 26 alphabets and nothing more. And here I was enrolled in a primary school, an English school with, of course, Tamil as a second language. So it was quite an interesting period from about primary four, primary five, primary six, when I had to pick up uh, the language and learn all of the other subjects. Now I work with Hindu Endowment Board. As part of my job, I have to visit uh, Hindu temples and Hindu organizations. And whenever I visit a temple, of course, the first question in my mind is, when was the temple established? What is the temple's history? And some of the temples have been here since the time when uh, Indians and Tamils started coming since Stanford Rifles came to Singapore. 
And often we hear that Sri Mariamman Temple, which was built in 1827, is the oldest Hindu temple. But I suspect the, the dates uh, for many of the temples were somewhere around there. It could be between 1825 to 1860, 1880s that some of the oldest temples were established. So I could name a few, you know, the, the current temples that still on the same spot as they were established, such as uh, Sri Srinivasa Purumal Temple, Sri Veeramakaliman Temple, Sri Shenbhavanar Temple, Sri Dendayadabani Temple. These were all temples that are more than 100 years old. And definitely there is a mixture of what they had uh, practiced then still being followed. And of course, they had also infused uh, new ways of doing things, a special Singaporean way of handling temples. Having been a migrant society, we were kind of worried about losing what was then practiced in India. So I suppose the uh, trustees and the management held on to that a bit more strongly than what might even be in many temples in Tamil Nadu. So practices or festivals such as Taipusam and, and, and Thimidhi and uh, celebrating Pongal, celebrating Thibavali, all had uh, additional significance to all the Tamils in Singapore. And because predominantly those who came here, uh, those that 19th century, all Tamils, the practice of Tamil literature in terms of Devaram, Tiruvasagam, or even uh, Tamil uh, prayers, archanais, were, were practiced quite uh, strongly here. They brought in the best they could find. So you would find in Singapore the musicians, the temple musicians, the Tavil and Nadaswaram in almost all of the temples and what they play, and, and, and the kacheris, the, the vidwans they bring, the speakers they brought for all the kumbabishegams were the top notch that you probably would not even hear even if you're on Tamil Nadu. So in that sense, I think it kind of helped Tamil education, Tamil speaking, understanding uh, that part of uh, Hinduism through Tamil literature slightly better. And even now, uh, if you were to quote a line or two from uh, Devaram, it is understood, generally is understood. So it's, it's kind of a mixture, a good mixture between what we are holding on to for the last century and what we have kind of uh, infused uh, in the practices that made it uh, better, I would think. The interesting fact about the Hindu temples in Singapore is it's got a mixture of Hindu culture, if I may say so. You see, basically temples in India are divided as Shaivite temple or Vaishnavite temple or Shakta temple and so on. So the mixture is not there as much in terms of, uh, you know, Vaishnavite deities within Shaivite temples and all that. But in Singapore, you'd find that almost all temples has a good mix of all of this various uh, philosophies, and, and deities within one temple premises. So take for example, uh, Sri Mariman Temple. You know where in, in, in India, in a Mariman Temple, you find a Ramar Sanctum. But here you can, uh, you will. And you will also find uh, Draupadi Sanctum, uh, Aravan Sanctum and all. These are all the folk uh, gods, folk traditions uh, that were followed in some of the villages. So that's probably because it could be because there were donors who wanted a particular sanctum or there was only that much space. If you look at statistics, population statistics, right from 1821, right up to the 1921, a uh, hundred year, there was an increase of only between, between 2,000 to about 30,000 Tamils uh, in, in, in Singapore. So there was no, uh, 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 resources, there are not enough resources to actually have many temples and many places. So they accommodated. They kind of treated each other as one group in a foreign land. So they accommodated everybody's needs and practices. Of course, later in the 
uh, 20th century, middle of 20th century, when land was acquired for various government purposes, they had to merge many of the temples. Uh, from what I hear, there were about 40 odd temples. Right now, there are about 24, which means the, many of the temples had to merge. And in merging, you'd find deities from different uh, philosophies and traditions would have to come together. So uh, Singaporean temples are unique in that manner. Uh, similar to some of the cosmopolitan temples you'll find in bigger cities like Chennai or you know uh, Bangalore and all that. So it's, it, it also allows for mixing of people from various uh, paths, uh, you know, uh, uh, paths that they follow. And so we, we then come across as one Hindu population.